Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas Presbyterian Church. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are grateful that you are joining with us for online worship today. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. First, for an announcement, I want to say we miss y'all greatly. We can hardly wait for the time when we can all be back here together to worship. Yet we want to continue to keep everyone safe. I also would ask you to continue to pray for those who are sick, those who are dying, those who have lost their jobs, those who are in the health professions, and those who are lonely. Um, a reminder, uh, we will be serving communion during this worship service. So if you want to get your bread in your cup, you'll be ready. Let us worship with our praise songs. Higher than the mountain 
Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. are good, all your ways are sure, I will trust in you alone, higher than my sight, high above my life, I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go, where you stay, I'll stay. worship, let us center our hearts on these words from the Gospel of John. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. With these words ringing in our ears, let us join together in prayer. Jesus, good shepherd of the sheep, by whom the lost are sought and guided into the fold, feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. And lead us, that we may be with you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And all the people say, Amen. Rejoice ye pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks and sing Your festal banner wave on high The cross of Christ your King Rejoice, rejoice Rejoice, give thanks and sing 
with voice as full and strong as ocean surging praise, send forth the sturdy hymns of old, the songs of ancient days. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Then on ye pure in heart, rejoice, give thanks, and sing. Your fast all manner wave on high, the cross of Christ your King. Rejoice, 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 give thanks. Our Lord calls us and offers to lift our darkness, to give us hope of a new day. Our Lord calls us from our wavering from the depths to higher ground, to bring us forgiveness and new life, to call us to courageous living, wash us clean again with the waters of our baptism. Lord Jesus, call us to yourself and hear our prayer, our prayer of repentance. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Holy One, we confess to you and to one another that we have not always followed Christ's example. When we have been abused, we have been abusive in return. We have gone astray. Lead us back into your fold and guard our souls in Jesus' name. Please take a moment for silent confession. And let all God's people say, Amen. The assurance of pardon is this. Friends, the promise of our faith is that if we entrust ourselves to the one who judges justly, we need not feel threatened, for we will be returned to righteousness. Having been brought back into the safety of God's fold, we rejoice in the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, live and believe in the good news that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will strengthen us to be devoted to the teachings of your word. And through it, may we hear your voice and follow into eternal life. Amen. Morning, Bert. Good morning, Ernie. So, what's the scripture for today, Bert? The scripture is Psalm 23, Ernie. Psalm 23 is also known as the Divine Shepherd. Oh, well, what's divine mean, Bert? Well, Ernie, divine is being godly or godlike. Hmm. Oh, okay, Bert. So, why is the shepherd divine? Well, Ernie, because it is a metaphor. What's a metaphor, Bert? A metaphor is a figure of speech in which a word or a phrase is applied to an object or action to which the metaphor is not literally applicable but is similar. This metaphor is used to compare a shepherd who watches over his sheep to Jesus, the divine shepherd, watching over us. So if Psalm 23's the Divine Shepherd explains how Jesus is like the shepherd watching over the sheep. And we're considered the sheep. Yes, Ernie. As my friend Monty once said, sometimes we can be a bit dim. Huh. Exactly, Ernie. What? What you just said. Huh? 
Exactly. In comparison to Jesus, we may seem a little dim. Oh, well, if you put it that way, in comparison to Jesus, I don't feel so bad being thought of as not so smart, Bert. Yes, Ernie. Psalm 23 is one of the most popular and beloved psalms in the Bible, written by David. We often hear it recited at church and during times of mourning, yet it's more than just a beautiful poetic stanza. Oh, really, Bert? Really, Ernie. You remember that before David was king of Israel, he was a shepherd. He took care and protected flocks of sheep. And he wrote this psalm describing God as a shepherd and God's people as his flock. Hmm, that's interesting, Bert. Yes, it is, Ernie. Through this beautiful metaphor, Psalm 23 gives us invaluable insights into the character of God and his plan for his children. Well, I'm glad that David made this meta. Made this what? Made this meta, Bert. You know, meta for explaining our relationship with God. Our first scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, beginning in chapter 10. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Jesus says, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Here ends the first reading. Oh. 
scripture for today is very familiar, the 23rd Psalm. Listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Beginning at the beginning, we each say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And these are incredibly comforting words. In this psalm, we are reassured that God is the shepherd and we realize that no one other than God or Jesus can act as our shepherd no earthly king, no president, no governor, no mayor, no other human being, no one. And during this pandemic time, we need a shepherd. We need comfort. We need reassurance. That's why Psalm 23 is the most appropriate scripture for today. Psalm literally means a song sung to the accompaniment of a stringed instrument. In other words, the book of Psalms is a book that consists of a song lyrics. Thus, a psalm is a poetic prayer written for singing. You have probably heard that saying, those who sing pray twice. Our Bible contains 150 psalms, which easily makes it the longest book in the Bible. And it is filled with all these poetic prayers to be sung. Noted scholar Herman Gunkel classified the psalms into different categories, which included songs of lament, songs of thanksgiving, royal songs, wisdom songs, and yet, Psalm 23 does not fit neatly into any of these categories. And although it is a very popular scripture, it is often associated with death. The 23rd Psalm is usually read at funerals and memorial services, sometimes in the church, 
sometimes at the graveside. And it touches us, each one of us, in a very personal and intimate way. Some years ago, I spent time with a family whose patriarch was dying. And when I arrived at their home, it seemed to me that the dear man was agitated. Reading scripture is usually calming, not only per to the person dying, but also to everyone else. So I suggested and asked if there was a scripture that both the wife and the daughter thought would be appropriate. And they both said the 23rd Psalm. Together we held hands, we held the dying man's hands, and we joined together in reciting the 23rd Psalm. It was a very moving experience, a very calming experience, a very hopeful experience for all of us. Seminary professor John E. White writes, this particular psalm is not merely for moments of death. It needs to be read, heard, and understood more importantly as a psalm for living. It, for it puts daily activities such as eating and drinking and seeking security in a radically God-centered perspective that challenges our usual ways of thinking. And then this psalm calls us not to think of ourselves alone, but to take our place with others in the household of God. The first three verses are written in the first person. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Lie down in green pastures means to have food. Besides still waters means to have some water to drink. In right paths means danger is avoided and adequate shelter is found. In short, God restores my soul, may be better translated, God keeps me alive. When Jesus prayed this psalm, as he did as a good Jew, he was not yet recognized as the shepherd, although he knew it was going to happen. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. In Jesus' time in ancient Israel, before fences contained grazing livestock, shepherds were essential as guardians of the sheep. And sheep were required for wool and milk and meat and as sacrificial animals. As a faithful son of Israel, Jesus had a clear image of a good shepherd. He knew about Moses and David, both of whom were shepherds. As a young person, that was a long time ago, and a lifelong Texan, I thought sheep were dumb, and cows were smart, and horses were smart. I didn't want to be compared to a sheep. Yet, as I have grown older and I hope wiser, I want to be Jesus' sheep, the sheep of the Good Shepherd's pasture. Pastor and author Barbara Brown Taylor tells of an acquaintance who had actually grown up on a sheep ranch and could dispel the myth that sheep are dumb. It was actually the cattle ranchers who started this rumor because sheep do not behave like cows. Cows are herded from the rear with shouts and prods from the cowboys, but that does not work with sheep. If you stand behind sheep making noises, they will just run around behind you. They actually prefer to be led. Cows can be pushed, 
Sheep must be led. Sheep will not go anywhere that someone else, their trusted shepherd, does not go first to show them that everything is all right. Sheep seem to consider their shepherds as part of their family. And the relationship that grows up between the two is quite exclusive. They develop a language of their own that outsiders are not privy to. And not only do the sheep know the shepherd's voice, but the shepherd knows each one of the sheep. He knows their names, like Curly or Princess or Tiny or maybe Blackie. He knows their characteristics and that each one is different. Some can go astray. Some can wander off and get lost. Some can follow the wrong voice if they're sick or stressed or lost. Sounds sort of like a lot of people, doesn't it? In verse 4 of the psalm, the structural and theological center the author begins speaking directly to the shepherd, to God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And the word translated as darkest valley appears to be a combination of two words in English, shadow and death, which we recognize as the King James Version of this verse. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Jesus experienced the shadow of death at his crucifixion. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Jesus ate at tables with enemies, with Judas, he was anointed with oil by Mary. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The Hebrew word hesed translates as mercy in the New Revised Standard Version and as love in the New International Version. And it really means both mercy and love all rolled up together. God's love and mercy doesn't just follow a person, but the Hebrew word used right here is more accurately translated as pursue. God actively pursues us with love and mercy. There is no doubt the psalmist was feeling stressed as he wrote the words in Psalm 23. Maybe it was David, maybe it was someone else. Maybe he is lacking enough food and drink. Maybe he feels extreme danger. Maybe he is worrying about his enemies. There is no doubt that we too are going through a dark valley as we move forward during this coronavirus pandemic. We hear all kinds of numbers, of cases, of deaths, of testing, of different recommendations for reopening businesses and churches. It is confusing, perplexing, and heartbreaking to hear of all who have lost a loved one. Our security is shaken and our stress increases and we wonder what happened to our old confidence. Yet we must remember we are utterly dependent on God as sheep are dependent upon the shepherd. And we must realize that in these dark times, we are God's. We are totally dependent on God. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. Dr. Charles asks, 
Allen, great pastor of First Methodist Houston for many years, told this story. The Allied soldiers gathered many hungry, homeless children after World War II and placed them in large camps. The children were abundantly fed and cared for. However, at night they did not sleep well. They seemed restless and afraid. And finally, a psychologist offered a solution. After the children were put to bed, they each received a slice of bread. If they wanted more to eat, they could have it. But this particular slice was not to be eaten. It was just to hold. The slice of bread produced marvelous results. The children would go to sleep, subconsciously feeling that there was something to eat tomorrow. That calmed each child. In Psalm 23, David says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Instinctively, the sheep know the shepherd has made plans for their grazing, so the sheep will lie down in peace, as if it had a slice of bread in its hand. The shepherd of Psalm 23 has become flesh in Jesus Christ the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus is the good news of great joy for all people. He is the Emmanuel, God with us. He is the reality of Psalm 23. Jesus prepares a table before you and me. He invites us to share in this meal. If things appear dark, frightening, hang on to your piece of bread and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk in the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Jesus said, come to me all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Come and meet Christ at his table. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy God, we praise you for your love, bringing order out of chaos, breathing life into dust, leading captives into freedom, calling wandering children home, giving bread to the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, raising the dead to life. Thank you, holy God. We thank you for Jesus, word made flesh, light of the world, living water, shepherd and gate, way and truth, bread of heaven, cup of salvation, resurrection and life. Spirit, come, come and live in us, in this bread, in this cup, in your people. In one in the body, one in the blood, one with Christ, one in ministry in this place and in the world, in every place and in the world to come. We lift up for your special care those sick, dying, afraid, hungry, exhausted. Lord, bless them and all who are brokenhearted in this pandemic, here and around the entire world. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power forever and ever. And we all say, amen. Let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have debts against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And we all say, Amen. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took the bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. And we all say, Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you have given us a share in the one bread and the one cup and made us one with Christ. Help us to bring your comfort and peace to others who are hurting. We ask this through Christ our Lord, and we all say, Amen. Please join me now as we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to our time for the offering, we want to thank everyone for their continued support uh, to the church through this time. It continues to make this and other ministries of the church possible. You can continue to do so uh, by mailing tithes and offerings to the church office or by using the online giving tool on the church's website or in the video description below. Listen now for the invitation to our offering. Our God has prepared a table before us and our cup overflows. So let us give generously from our hearts as a way of praising God and giving to those in need. Let us pray. Holy and generous God, you have anointed us and we are yours. Bless these tithes and offerings that they may be green pastures and still waters for any and all who need your comfort and restoration. Amen. Oh, no. 
Friends, I just wanted to point out to you that these flowers are the Easter lilies that were blooming in our garden right outside the sanctuary. So we've had these for two weeks now. They're beautiful. It's wonderful. Um, as you go forward, try to appreciate the good and the beautiful and all the things in this world that God created for us. Don't forget that. Even when you're discouraged, even when you're down, think about the fact. This is a fact. God is with us always. Never forget that. Share that with others. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and always. And we all say, Amen.